And once I arrive at some location, instead of going back to my starting position, I now want you to move to wherever the player currently is. Let's see what that looks like. So every time I arrive at my last scene position, find his new position and go there. That's kind of a good AI for a zombie, right? Because the zombie kind of sees you, moves towards that location. He's probably looking down at the ground, thinking about brains. And then he um, looks up and you're not there anymore. Oh, you're over there. He's going to go to where you were. So let's go here. Kind of keep an eye on this guy. Now we circle around. Oh, it's coming back. So he kind of stopped there. Now he's coming back after me again. So rudimentary quote AI. And he's not going to follow me down here. That's one good way to get away from him. All right. Pretty basic, right? Yeah. Easy enough to do. That closes up that demo, and uh, we will see you after lunch. Sweet. And then we're going to talk about more excellent stuff. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, and I uh, will see you soon. Thanks, guys. Welcome back once again to Building Windows 10 Games with Unity 5. I'm Adam Tulliper. Evangelist from Microsoft, back again, joining us after lunch. I'm Matt Newman. I am an indie game developer. And this module, we're going to be covering everything I wish they told me about cameras, uh, or at least a good chunk of it. Maybe not everything. <laughs> so we're going to talk about uh, some good lessons and things that I didn't know when I first started out writing games, and, and it took me a while to find out, um, such as using in image effects, what you can do with cameras, difference in camera types. So uh, let's get rolling, and I think we got some good stuff for you on this module. Let's do it. Sounds good. We're going to be covering cameras and layers and how the layers affect um, things in 3D and 2D. We're going to talk about animating the camera and camera effects. So to start out, cameras and layers. Every scene has a main camera. Um, it is there by default. In other words, when you create a new scene, uh, it always will have a new main camera. Getting a reference to that main camera is very, very common. So Unity provides you a method of doing that by just calling camera.main. And what camera.main does behind the scenes is it finds the first camera that is, has a tag of main camera. That's one of the tags that Unity gives you built in by default. And the first camera, the first active camera that it finds, tag main camera, uh, that's what it returns from camera.main. And you can do some pretty cool things with cameras, like uh, shoot rays out into the scene and find out what you hit. So think about when you touch the screen. Uh, you go like that on the screen. Uh, you can shoot an invisible arrow out, and Unity will tell you what it hits. And that's how, when you do touch controls and when you tap the screen and, and you want to know if you've shot something, you can use something like this API call here, uh, camera.screenpointarray input.mouse position. So wherever you, you are clicking on the screen, shoot out an invisible ray. And um, so there's some cool things you can do with that. Now, let's talk about different camera modes, because there's two camera modes that Unity will support. And perspective is the default mode in 3D. Let's be specific about that. Uh, default mode in 3D and how much you can see is defined by the property called field of view on that camera, and we'll, and we'll check that out. And you have a clipping plane in the camera, and which defines your minimum and max viewing distance. So if you look at the image of the left-hand side here, uh, our clipping plane is back here. That's the, so this is near and far. I'm suddenly getting memories to when I was a child. And remember those guys? What? what? <laughs> the ghost guys on Sesame Street. You guys don't know those guys? Oh, okay. The near yeah, and far yeah, guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to okay. do, do the voice, but uh, near, <laughs> far. <laughs> YouTube it if you, uh, you know, if you don't remember. So uh, back here is our, our near clipping plane, and there's our, um, our far clipping plane. Basically says, how far can we see in the scene? And notice in this image on the right here, I pushed up the near clipping plane a little bit more, and notice here we can see that chop off. Um, let's go ahead. I'll use that script that I showed you guys earlier today, and let's go into temp, and we're going to say battle build. Right click on this and open as Unity project. I love that right click open as Unity project, if I do say so myself. <laughs> I hope you download that and get a lot of use out of that. I, I seriously use it all the time. Uh, under scenes. Let's look at, um, we'll do level one. Oh, I remember this one. 
You do? Yeah. You remember this one? I do. All right, good. I made a GUI screen for this. You did make a GUI screen for this. If we're lucky, we'll see it. Come on, load up here. There we go. This is a pretty, uh, pretty hefty scene. So let's go ahead and look at this guy. This is a huge terrain, a highly detailed terrain. So that's why uh, kind of a little bit of a delay here. It's chugging a little bit. Yeah, we could actually do, um, this might be a little bit better for performance here. Let's load up complete. And what we're gonna do on this demo is I'm gonna just show you how we can kind of change some of these perspective values. While this scene is loading up, let's give this a minute to finish loading up. Let's just con con continue talking and we'll get back to the scene here. Uh, the other type of camera is an orthographic camera. So we have perspective and orthographic are the two types of projection that's handled in Unity. By default, in 3D projects, it's a perspective camera. When you go into Unity and you specify here that you want to create a new project, when you select 2D, my 2D project, your camera mode in this project actually defaults to orthographic by default, which has a very, very different behavior as we'll see, but it's very common in 2D. And an orthographic camera does not, um, should I say, respect perspective and the way that we see things. It just does not operate the way that we see things, which is good for 3D. There's no scaling uh, like you would see in a perspective. So perspective sees things like we would. You have this uh, cone that comes out. There we go. All right, so our camera here. All right, we can see what this camera can see right here. This is a perspective camera. How do I know that? We can see it's two different modes here. It's set to perspective. If I change the field of view, notice, this is actually one way that you can do um, like a zoom. When you're doing uh, like a sniper scope on top of a rifle, for example, you can kind of zoom in like that, show a black image on the screen to kind of black everything else out with a circle in the center. So that's one way of doing that. Now the clipping planes here, that's our near and our far. So if we change this, see how I start getting cut off in my camera preview there in the lower right hand side? So that allows you to define how far out and how close you can see things. Um, a common beginner mistake is you don't see anything in your scene and you realize it's actually behind your camera. This happens a lot in 2D, and we'll look at 2D shortly here. Now on the orthographic side, so again, this is common for 2D. On any new 3D project, if I come into this 3D project and I say new scene, my new camera is there and it's perspective by default. If I go to that 2D project I just created and I look at that camera, it's orthographic. And let me click on that camera and rather than having this cone that comes out, notice it has this fixed box here. If I change that to perspective, right, this is how we see things. We've, we have this, this cone of vision, this frustrum. We don't see things outside of it. Here's our box, and it goes very, very far out. And it doesn't matter if an object is here, or here, or here, or here, it will not change its size. Everything is the same size no matter how far away it is which is very different than perspective. In perspective, of course, uh, the farther away something is, the smaller it is, um, which also allows for effects like parallax. Mm -hmm. Very, very easy. If you move a camera, let's go back to complete here. If we take our camera, and if we start moving it left to right, you'll notice Everything in the background stays almost centered. That building way in the background, but the tank up close moves very fast. So we get this parallax effect, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's common in 2D games. This just happens in 3D by default. This is how we see things. But we're gonna look at this, uh, what the orthographic cameras do on the 2D side. It's very important here, the orthographic camera size. That's how many units is equal to half the height on your screen. Again, very important for 2D as we'll see, because when you want a fixed height, orthographic is the choice. Perspectives can vary, depends on the viewing size that we're in. Uh, if we look over here, our viewing angle on our game can change all the time. Unity has built in a couple different aspect ratios that you can choose here. So 16 by nine, for example, 
And notice, things scale. You can add your own custom sizes on here. And this presents some challenges when you're trying to make a game um, and you want to ensure that you are fixed at a particular box size or resolution, important for 2D. On 3D, um, when you have these free-flowing games, it's not quite as much of an issue. But let's look at um, our 2D game, the 2D version of the vampire game. Vamp Kid vs. Zombie Apocalypse. <laughs> While that loads, just so we can have the official demo slide here, we're going to talk about 2D orthographic cameras in this one. Load up level one. So this project was defaulted to 2D. I mentioned that a 2D camera, in other words, a camera in a 2D project, I shouldn't say 2D camera, that's incorrect, a camera in a 2D project is orthographic by default. How do we know any of this? If we go to Edit Project Settings Editor, you'll see Default Behavior Mode 2D. When we choose a new project and you do 2D or 3D, that's what it selects. And it does a couple important things. On a 2D project, it changes your default cameras to uh, orthographic. It enables this by default, which big deal. You can click in and out of it at any time, even in a 3D project. Uh, it also takes your images that you import into a project, and it makes them a texture type of sprite. So notice that this image here, any image I click on, um, fine artwork by Mr. Newman. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> any, any 2D image that I've dragged and dropped into my project comes in as type sprite. In a 3D project, if you do not have it set up like that, so I'm taking a little bit of a uh, sidestep here to kind of talk about this. Let me take this image and drag it into our other project that we've been using here. I'll take that platform image, drag it into our 3D project. Notice, look at the image, look at the size, the sides on this. It's all kind of white. I can't drag it and drop it into my scene. Whereas over in this guy, I can literally just take it and drag it up in here, and away I go. Like I'd expect to do it. So 2D defaults these images to a sprite, um, and 3D they just retain a texture. So a little, just a little side thing there because it's important to realize what difference is when you select a 3D versus a 2D project. Suddenly so delete this one from this project, and let's go back to Vamp Kid and let's look at our camera here. And also too, when you do um, sprites for 2D, it's going to alpha out any uh, any alpha channels you have in there or anything like that. Whereas when it comes in as texture data for a 3D project, it doesn't really know exactly what you want to do with it. It's just looking at it as, okay, it's an image file. How do you want to now use this texture? And then you have to go in manually and set the different texture settings for that specific texture. Exactly. What, he's, what Matt's saying here, that white location on the side here, and look over here how it's perfectly transparent, right? Yep. Like we'd expect it to be. Exactly. 2D in Unity was possible previously before they uh, integrated their support for 2D, but you had to use third-party toolkits or write your own mm -hmm. because you couldn't take this and drag it up. Like literally a texture like this is meant to be assigned to an object. I could, notice what happens. When I drag down into there, see what happens? So you would assign it to a quad. So thankfully they added this 2D support, which is pretty cool. And also if you start a project with 3D settings, and then decide, oh, I'm going to start doing 2D, right? It's not going, it's going to keep those initial 3D settings. And, I, and I've had that issue a couple of times. You want to make sure if you're doing a 2D project and you want to have that, that feature available, so when you bring the images in right away, it knows that this is a, this is a, a sprite, essentially, you got to have the 2D setting set up. If it's set on 3D, it's going to come in as a texture, and then you have to go in and change it yep. to sprite every so, single time. Good point. If you, so if you accidentally or decide later on you want to go to that 2D mode, yep. again, edit project settings editor, and just change your mode over to 2D, and then bam, you'll be good to go. And now anything else you bring into your project uh, acts like 2D. Otherwise, as Matt said, you got to go through and yeah. check it off. And it's like an extra step, basically. Yeah. It's not a, not a huge deal, but... Um, it's kind of a pain if you have like 100 images. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, so this guy here, this main camera, notice the box. This is great for, three, uh, for uh, 2D because this kind of matches the layout that I want here. If we look at this, I want this kind of boxy layout. This works well for me. And if I change things like the size, see what happens on the camera? 
it's kind of like a field of view and perspective, but this is size here. And this size will be fixed. So whatever you are looking at here, this is exactly what you will see on a target device in terms of height, not in terms of width. The aspect ratio for an 